Alright, hi, welcome back to another installment of the Camo Cook. I promised a few of you people on the internet that I would show you this recipe the next time I got a deer. What I'm going to do for you is this awesome recipe for deer heart. A lot of people ask me, how do you cook these things? Because, you know, not a lot of people actually save their hearts anymore like they used to back in the days. So, it's kind of a lost art nowadays on how to cook it. So, this is one of my favorite recipes on how to do it. I hope you like this one. So first what I'm going to be doing here is I got some bacon fat rendering. I took a pound of bacon, I trimmed off as much of the fat as I could, put it into the frying pan and I put it on medium low heat just for a little while to render out the fat till you get a nice bunch of the liquid grease into the bottom. Alright, see how you get a lot of that grease in the bottom there. It's kind of what you want, that's what we're going to be frying it in today. So I'm going to reduce the heat a little bit here. And I take all this nice crispy bacon that I rendered the fat out of. I'll be saving that for later. I'll be using that in the rest of the recipe. I'll set that off to the side. And now that we got the bacon fat ready, now it's time to prepare the heart. Just got this beautiful one this morning. It's fresh. The way you want to use it, you want to use it fresh out of the animal. You don't want to freeze it or anything else. It really compromises the integrity of the meat. But I'll show you how I'm going to prepare it here. Alright, now it is hard, so don't be squeamish. It's going to be a little bit of blood in it. What you want to do is you want to make a good half inch, three quarter inch slices. Right straight through it. There's going to be some cleaning to do when you get onto the inside. You want to go through and open up all these chambers and you're going to see little bits of congealed blood into it. You're going to want to take that out. It is the heart after all. It's where all the blood comes from. And then when you run around these big things, you want to take those out, those are tough. So just go ahead and cut it out. You want to take as much of the fat off of it as possible too. There's actually quite a bit of fat on this one, I'm not going to save that piece. But then you're going to want to take it, put it in a bowl of, you can use milk, you can use buttermilk. Right now I'm just using 2% milk because that's all I currently have at the moment. And then while it's in there, you're going to dredge them into some seasoned flour. It's just some flour with salt and pepper. Give it a light dusting of the flour. And then we're going to be putting it right into the bacon grease. Okay, at a medium high heat, you're going to want to add your uh, slices of breaded venison heart to your bacon grease. Use that instead of oil, it adds a hell of a lot of flavor to it. Plus, venison heart is an extremely lean meat, so you want the fat from the bacon. Fat equals flavor. Alright, when you got that sauteing, Add a little bit more of your bacon that you cut up earlier when you uh, took it out to render it. Just layer a bunch of bacon over the top of it. Not all of it though, save some of it. Then I got julienne red bell peppers, julienne green bell peppers. One of each, one red, one green, just to add a little bit of color. And I got one julienne yellow onion. And then I'm going to add a tablespoon of chopped garlic. Feel free to go heavy, it is venison. Venison loves garlic. And then I'm going to season it with just a little more salt and pepper. Then 
and you're just going to let that saute for about 5-10 minutes or so. Throw a lid on it. And just let it cook. Give it about, say, 10 minutes or so just so you start browning up the, the uh, hard. You just want to start getting it brown. We're going to be putting it back into the oven as soon as it comes out of here. I got my oven preset for 375 and you're going to bake it for right around 20-30 minutes after it comes out of the frying pan. Uh, see how that's getting a nice brown on the outside of it? That's exactly what you want right there. Don't want to black nothing, you just want to get it to start browning. Get the flour to start browning. Looking pretty close there. So when you do got it starting to brown up good, take it, put it in your casserole dish or glass bakeware or however you, whatever you want to use to bake it in. Just layer them through there. And then pour all the vegetables right on top of it. Vegetables, bacon grease, everything. Along with your leftover rest of your bacon. And then we're going to wrap that up in aluminum foil. Make sure it's wrapped up, sealed up good and tight. Check it in about 20-25 minutes or so and it should be ready to go. Okay, then one thing I always like to do when I cook it this way is about 10 minutes before it's done. Pull it out of the oven and I'm going to take off the aluminum foil. That way when you take off the aluminum foil and you can put it back in the oven and it'll let the bacon that's on top kind of brown up and crisp up a bit so it's not too limp and too runny. And it just helps to cook it a little more. Just leave it in there for another 5-10 minutes. Take it out and you're good to go. See you in 10. Okay, and after about 10 minutes, we'll just pull this right out of the oven. Should be good to go. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Hope you enjoy this last little segment of the Camo Cook. Join us back for more recipes. All wild game. Well, mostly anyways. Don't forget to go to our Facebook page at uh, www.facebook.com slash the camo cook. Check us out, give us a like, check out our YouTube videos on our YouTube channel, which is Willis Outdoors 1. I'll see you later.